I began with a piece by Domenico Scarlatti. It was his sonata in E major, K380. And it's a wonderful sonata that works really wonderfully on the harp, I think, and is really evocative of Spain. Um, Scarlatti was uh, working in Spain for the last 30 years of his life and was really influenced by Spanish culture. And I think this comes across in, um, particularly in the repeated rhythms. Um, but there's always such character and flair in each of his sonatas, which is really quite remarkable considering he wrote well over 500 of them. My next piece is um, by Albéniz, so I'm continuing in the Spanish style. And this piece, Torre Bermea, was um, written originally for the piano, um, but it was made famous by guitarists playing it. And I'm now playing it on the harp, and I think it works really beautifully on the harp. Um, because the richness of the lower register really lets all the soulful, passionate uh, melodies lower in the instrument sing out, and the higher registers really works for all of the delicate light notes in between.
final piece is um, the Overture and the Fugue from The Suite for Harp by Benjamin Britten. Um, Britten was an incredible composer and he really studied each instrument that he wrote for. He really took time to learn about the instrument and how it worked. And he formed a really close relationship with Ossian Ellis, who was a Welsh harpist. And he was really inspired by Ossian's musicianship and also Ossian's very unique sound. And the piece and lots of Britain's heart writing requires quite a tough articulation. And the sound can sometimes be quite harsh and pointed. Um, and this is something that, generally speaking, harpists are not encouraged to try and create. We're often taught to create a very French, warm sound. Um, but Ossian had a really distinctive, characterful sound, and this really influenced Britain in his harp writing. As with a lot of music by Britain, I think there's always something quite um, unsettling underneath it. There's a really wonderful quote from Bernstein where he says that if you really, really listen to Britain's music, it's really quite creepy. <laughs> There's something quite terrifying underneath it. And I think he was um, quite an introverted person who was really reflecting on a lot of difficult things happening in the 20th century um, and had a lot to say about the things that were taking place in the world. And he was obviously, of course, deeply influenced by his home county of Suffolk. And so much of the countryside and landscape of Suffolk, I think, is in his music. And um, especially at night time, um, I really uh, can't get out the, the images I have in my mind of driving around Suffolk late at night and um, feeling something quite eerie. And I really think that's present in a lot of Britain's music. And at this time, the time he wrote the piece um, in 1969, he was really obsessed with night time and wrote um, two other solo pieces for guitar and piano um, entitled Nocturne or Notano. And the Nocturne is really the heart of this piece, but today I'm just going to play the Overture and the Fugue. The Overture is incredibly grand um, and really exploits the full range of the instrument. And as always, it's got something slightly eerie about it, quite jarring rhythms and um, semitones. And then the Fugue is incredibly lively and playful and has a real juxtaposition of um, very staccato lines and very legato melodies. <laughs> 